Live from New York, it's The Cube, covering Big Data NYC 2015. Brought to you by Hortonworks, IBM, EMC, and Pivotal. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Hi everybody, we're back in New York City. Bruno Aziza, Aziza is here, longtime Cube alum and friend of theCUBE. Uh, he's the CMO of AtScale. Great to see you again. Thanks for having me, guys. Night. Awesome. Now uh, this is, I said to my panel last night, this is survey week. You know, yeah. We did a survey, Gartner did a survey, AtScale did a survey, Databricks did a survey, we're sort of parsing through all the data, so I definitely want to talk about that. But before I do, yeah. give us the update, give us the, you know, the, the quick bumper sticker on what AtScale is on doing. On what AtScale does, Your sure. Your latest, you know, next big thing. Yes, yeah. yeah, so we launched a company in, in April and we, we announced a Series A uh, um, where we had the participation of Jerry Yang, the, the founder of, of Yahoo, and um, or the founder of Cloudair. We're essentially a BI on Hadoop. Uh, middle layer uh, application. And what we do is we enable any BI tool like the Tableau or the Excel of this world to connect uh, to Hadoop uh, while providing scale, speed, and security, which is today the, the issue that people have when they connect BI tools directly uh, to Hadoop. We're kind of like, if you remember business objects had this thing called the business objects universe. Yep. We're that. We provide an environment for people to model the data that's in Hadoop without ever moving it. We integrate uh, directly with the BI tools without ever downloading any client. We integrate natively with them. And we provide security, access, uh, and, and performance. We have this great aggregation um, management system that allows people to get sub-second queries on uh, whatever data they have. So billions and uh, trillions of rows can be queries very quickly using at scale with very little intrusion to your and, environment. And what can you tell us about the company, the funding, the headcount, yeah. all that? You know, the yeah, so the stuff. company was started by uh, Dave Mariani. Dave uh, was a customer of mine actually when I was at Microsoft. Dave is the, the guy who built the largest OLAP cube on earth uh, <laughs> using uh, SQL analysis services. And when he started that, he realized there was a huge opportunity that's at the time where Yahoo was incubating um, Hadoop, so they were really the first company to do this. And he realized there was a need to connect the BI tools to the Hadoop layer. Uh, he left Yahoo, he went to do the same thing at cloud, and we had this discussion like, well, surely some, someone must be building the software, and he realized nobody did. And so that's when he started the company about three years ago, and I just joined at the beginning of the year to help launch the company. So we launched in April, we uh, announced our Series A uh, in uh, July. Uh, we are building the sales and marketing team. Actually, the, the uh, Bobby uh, DiMartino is, is our VP of sales, uh, an ex platform uh, guy. So we, we've got uh, really the, the A team in, in the big data space to help us really uh, help enterprises with the multiplicity of BI tools they have to connect that to, to Hadoop, which is going to be the secret, I think, as you'll, we'll talk about in the survey, on connecting the business users to Hadoop is how people get the most value and the most successful. So you collaborated with um, a number of, of organizations, yes. companies, and we're going to be collaborating together yes. as well. Wikibon's going to dive version. in and, and yeah. participate in this. So who are the companies that uh, participated? Let's start there besides AtScale. Yeah, so we, uh, we worked with Cloudera, Hortonworks, Mapar, uh, and Tableau. And the, the background for this survey was there wasn't really a lot of information on what people were doing with Hadoop particularly. So what we decided to do is go out and survey people that are already working with Hadoop and get a sense of how mature are they, what workloads are they working on, what they're anticipating on doing in the next six, 12 months, and so forth. And so this is essentially the largest Hadoop maturity survey that is in existence, 2,200 answers, uh, 1,300 unique companies across the world. And what the data is telling us is actually quite different from what we've seen over the last few surveys that uh, were commissioned by uh, Barclays or, or Gartner, uh, I, th I guess, recently. How so? Well, I think if you look at the surveys up to now, uh, I think the Barclays survey came out in, in uh, January and said it was surveyed 100 uh, CIOs, and it was fairly positive. And I think Gartner came out and then reached out to 300 companies. Uh, they got about 125 answers on some of their questions, and it was fairly negative. I think it was saying 54% of people were actually going to deploy uh, Hadoop. In our case, uh, out of the 2,200 people, 77% of those companies are uh, people that are not tire kickers, people that have more than 10 nodes, that have been using Hadoop um, for more than six, than, six, uh, than six months. And what we find is only 3% of them say they will do less with Hadoop over the next 12 months. Only 3%. So 97% of people are actually going to do more with Hadoop. And there's some interesting trends in terms of what are they doing with Hadoop itself. 
you know, I think in the first generation of Hadoop, you saw a lot of work on ETL and data science, and clearly, the trend is going towards business intelligence. The way we, we structured the survey is we asked people if they had a dupe and they had a, a set of questions, and we also asked them if they didn't have a dupe, what their intentions were, and there's another set of questions. And the workloads on Hadoop are changing, which to us indicates that there is a, a maturity going, and, and Hadoop is entering its second phase where really it's about engaging with the business users. The, the key stat you know, to, to uh, remember there is for companies that have been able to provide self-service to Hadoop, they're 50% more likely to gain business value out of Hadoop than any other company. And so I think we're now entering the second phase where Hadoop is about kind of what we lived in the BI world, which was less about structuring the data, worrying about you know, loading the data into an environment. It's more about connecting it to people like you and me that could actually get business answers. So I'm curious as to whether or not you probed around the role of the traditional you know, BI, traditional data warehouse. I'm stuck. Yeah. You know, Christian Chabot has been on the, the queue yes. before and he talks about the, and you live this world, yeah. the slow building of cubes yes. and the BI business. Of course, Tableau comes in, they're all about the viz, they yeah. want to go fast. Well, we had Click on recently, they're sort of you know, going after a similar space. Yeah. Did you query the respondents around the role of that existing data warehouse and existing BI tools? Yes, so I think there's a couple of trends going on. The first one is the assumption that Hadoop is going to replace the enterprise data warehouse, and that's clearly not the answer from the surveyors. I think- Opposite, well, right? I mean, yeah, I think, I think there's, I, I don't have the exact stats in front of me, but I think it's only 40% uh, of people that are saying they're going to replace it over time. So I think the reality is we're going to live in a heterogeneous environment mm -hmm. uh, for a long time. Like we have mainframes today, I think we're going to have traditional data warehouses for a long time. I think what's going on is there are some, some scenarios where Hadoop is uniquely a position to address it and companies are betting on it. I think if you look at the data in general and if you're an executive today and you're sitting next to two other guys and you're, you're the one that's not doing anything with Hadoop, two things are going to happen. The guy to the right that's been working on Hadoop is going to do a lot more Right, only 3% of them are not going to do anything. And the guy to your left who's in looking at Hadoop is going to onboard it over the next six, 12 months. So I think there's a certain sense of urgency that these executives should, should get to. Now in terms of agility, I think you're absolutely right. And there's, there's a need for a set of, of new tools and new approaches to provide agility on the data that's in Hadoop. I think historically in the first generation of Hadoop, people have been putting, putting people, pushing people to move data into Hadoop leave it there, and then at analysis time, to take it out of Hadoop, which is, I think, completely contrary to why people go to Hadoop. So I think, I mean, and I'm talking about it because that's the space we're in, uh, we need to be able to provide analysis capabilities to people in Hadoop without moving the data. You need to be able to play the data where it lays. Mm. Uh, and I think that's a big change in how people are, are looking into how they're going to be able to leverage to their Hadoop player. Just to be clear, we've, yeah. we've heard scenarios like this yeah. where, um, you put the raw data in Hadoop. Yeah. Um, data engineers massage it. Yeah. Data scientists try and get some signal out. Yeah. The repeatable sort of answers, then they push out to the data warehouse. That's right. Because it's more consumable. Yeah. Would it be fair to say that what you're trying to do is put that uh, sort of put that cube layer on top of the data so it doesn't have to be moved into the curated data warehouse? That's, that's exactly right. So I think, the, so specifically for at scale, we're virtual cube technology. So differently from the early OLAP uh, technologies that were very physical, where you had to refresh the cube and build, build it, and it would take weeks to do that. In our case, it's an XML uh, definition, so it's very malleable, it's very agile, and as you make changes there, they're visible right away into the BI tools people are using. But I think to your point, I think enterprises are realizing by having the data scientist front end this process uh, and having a very physical you know, a process of moving the data, you're cutting into the agility of your organization. I think the game where it's going next is that actually you don't have to move the data and you should be able to, to analyze it uh, rather than go through the typical ETL process. You know, what's happening there is that as data is growing, the process of moving that data becomes very heavy, very expensive, and very slow. In fact, in some cases, and we're working with an online company right now, they can't move it fast enough. So you, we've got to divorce ourselves from putting the data in Hadoop and then moving it out at analysis time. I think organizations want to be able to analyze it the minute the file is closing on the HDFS. So I wanted to ask Merv this, um, yeah. but we didn't have time, so, so I'm going to ask you to play you know, BI analyst. <laughs> you know that business. So I love Merv, but Mark, I can't fill his so shoes. No, he's great. <laughs> so Mark Madsen tweeted out, 
yesterday, the fragmentation of metadata and Hadoop is the same as the old BI world. Yep. And then Merv responded, said it could be worse. A lot of people just dump it in and figure it out later. Yes. I, was, I wanted to ask him because, I wanted to ask Merv, is, is that necessarily such a bad thing? Uh, to just dump, dump the data? And, yeah, just dump it in and figure it out later. Yeah. later. Um, I mean, I know there's a lot of work to be done, yeah. but what do you make of that, that comment from Mark Madsen? So I, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think what we've learned is uh, data is just like wine. You know, you never know when it's going to be good, and you probably you know, will regret it if you don't have access to it. So I think the, 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 the habit of never throw away data, which is something that is a big principle for our company, and where Dave, you know, Aya, who learned that is, that's got to be a principle number one. Whatever data you can collect, just dump it in there and then worry about it later on. But you don't want to be in a situation where you don't have access to it uh, later on. I think what's going on as well, and I think it's probably a lesson from the first generation in Hadoop, is that we were thinking about Hadoop as a very cost efficient way of storing a lot of information. And if you look at the data in the survey, what we found is the companies that are actually approaching Hadoop, the Hadoop opportunity as a revenue generation opportunity rather than a cost saving, are more likely to succeed and gain value. I think the stat, actually I've got it here, the 30% more likely to achieve business value. So I think what we're learning in the second phase of the life of Hadoop is that all the things that we thought about in terms of you know, reducing storage, moving data around, I think are just going to disappearing to bring, you know, to bring it to a new light, kind of what we lived in the BI days, which is got to figure out a way to attach it to business people, you got to figure out a way to attach it to them quickly in the tools that they already know. Yeah, Abhi Mehta said in our, on our panel last year, he said thus far the, the, the value in Hadoop has been, R, the ROI has been reduction on investment. The yeah. point was that's not sustainable. That's right. You really have to focus on the value. But I wanted to ask you something about the keep it forever because I would imagine yeah. a lot of customers, the general counsel doesn't want to hear that and the yeah. governance guys go, oh, wait a minute, no. Yeah. We want to delete everything. Yeah. <laughs> How do you deal with that? Square that circle for me. Okay, so this is an interesting trend as well because we, in the survey we asked people that have a dupe and people that don't have a dupe what their fears were. And in both cases, skill set is the number one, which is, I think makes a lot of sense because they're afraid of how do I front end this, this kind of new data environment. But of the people that have been working with the dupe, other fears kind of come in. And those fears are management and security and performance and so forth. So I think there's a little bit of a misnomer of people that are onboarding a dupe and think, oh, I'm going to have a problem because I don't have enough people to work with the dupe. Mm -hmm. And then they realize it's kind of a traditional data management project, which is you're going to have to have security. You're going to have to restrict as to, as, as, uh, access and so forth. And so that's where I think it's an interesting market for us is because I call it the three S's. The three S's is speed, scale, and security. And if you're able to, oops, so I guess somebody's calling me. <laughs> if you're able to, to nail those three things, uh, you'll be able to, to transition those people and, and legal counsel and people that are worried about access. It's not about not storing it. It's about giving the information to the right people when they need it and the information they've got, they need to have access to. All right, Bruno, we have to leave it there. I really appreciate you coming back in the cube. We're looking forward to getting that uh, raw data from the survey. That's right, we'll be it is right it here. The community. And uh, always great to see you again. Thanks great for coming Great to see on. you, thank All you right. very much. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next guests right after this word. This is the cube. We're live from Big Data NYC at Strata and Hadoop World.